What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying life today. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit. Huge thank you to Nick Yazdani over at Coons Tyson's Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram for allowing me to do this video for you guys today. If you are interested in this particular Grand Cherokee or any Chrysler Dodge Jeep or Ram product, then I'll be sure to have Nick's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video. All right, well, just like usual, first I'm gonna talk about the exterior and the performance. So like I said, this is a 2024 Jeep Grand Cherokee Summit and this particular one has been painted in the $595 diamond black crystal pearl coat. I wanted to preface this video by saying Jeep has made no significant changes to the Summit for the 2024 model year. So with that in mind, as standard with the Summit, you get LED reflector headlights with automatic high beams as well as LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, and LED fog lights. This is what the front end of the Summit looks like, so you may be able to tell you get your silver Jeep logo at the center of your hood. And then below that, you get Jeep's classic seven slot grill with the silver accenting. And then beneath both your grill and your headlights, you get some silver accent colored trim. This is what I'm referring to as that. And then at the center of your seven slot grill, within that slot, you get a forward facing camera. And that is because the Summit comes standard with a 360 degree view camera system. Now the slot all the way to the driver's side, you may notice that looks like a camera little thing down in there. And that is because this one's been optioned with the $2,865 Advanced ProTech Group 4, which gives you night vision. And that is your night vision camera there. And then coming down just a little bit more, you get gloss black lower and outer grills. This is the lower grill. These are the outer grills and you get some more silver accent trim with both the outer grills and the lower grill down here. And then one thing that's pretty cool within your lower grill, you get a little Willys Jeep right there. So cool little Easter egg. I also wanted to mention that as standard with the Summit, you get six forward facing sensors. And when talking about ground clearance, the running ground clearance is 8.9 inches but because the summit comes standard with a quadra lift air suspension you get up to 10.9 inches of ground clearance in off-road mode too you can see you get these body color wheel arch moldings and i'm going to give you a little view of the airbag here at the front end obviously you get an airbag at all four corners with this air suspension system and then these are the standard and only wheels you can get with the Summit and they are 20 inch silver painted wheels wrapped in 23550 in the front and 26550 in the rear Pirelli Scorpion Verde all season tires. I will give you a view of the tread pattern on those tires there real quick. And now I'm gonna take a step back, give you a front three quarter shot of this thing because I wanted to tell you as standard with this thing, you get rain sensing wipers. Also as standard with this, you get the black painted roof. So if this thing was painted in white, red, whatever color, the Summit gets a black painted roof. So you're always gonna have that two-tone look, which kind of reminds me of a Range Rover in some sort of way. So with that in mind, you also get gloss black mirror caps with integrated turn signals. And as standard, these side view mirrors are heated, power folding, the driver side mirror is auto dimming. You also get two memory functions for not only your driver's seat, but it is also going to memorize your outer mirror settings as well. And then you have your blind spot monitoring on the outer left hand side of your driver's side mirror and on the outer right hand side of your passenger side mirror. And then at the bottom of your mirror on both sides, you get a camera and both of those cameras work with your 360 degree view camera system. And last but not least, you also get a puddle light at the bottom of both of your side view mirrors. Now I'm going to take a couple steps back to give you a side profile shot of this thing. So again, you get the black painted roof, but with the black painted roof, you get the silver accent colored roof rails. Not only do you get the silver roof rails, but you also get some silver window trim at the top of the windows, and then you get gloss black window trim at the bottom of the windows. You also get body color door handles with keyless access and illumination on all four of your door handles, but only on your front two doors will you find your silver Grand Cherokee lettering with the American flag. Pretty cool. And then also you get the body color door cladding, but you do get some more silver accenting down here as well with that silver accent trim piece on both the front and rear door. 
but working my way towards the back end of this thing you get a capless filler neck and 87 octane will do you just fine and you will also find another willies deep back here as well closing that back up let's do a rear three quarter shot of the grand cherokee summit that is what she looks like here at the back end and then up top here with the black painted roof you get the gloss black antenna obviously you also get the gloss black roof spoiler with your integrated third brake light but this one being optioned with the advanced pro tech group four you get the digital rear view mirror and this is the camera for your digital rear view mirror it's actually a very useful system it rids you of your blind spots as standard with the Summit, you get LED taillights, and back here you get some more silver badging with the 4x4 badging, the Jeep badging, and this is what the Summit badging looks like, kind of silver and some gray. But just beneath your Jeep lettering is where you will find your backup camera, and then offset to the right of the backup camera, if you press on that pad, that is going to open up your power lift gate. This is a hands-free and height adjustable power lift gate. If you wanted to adjust the height of the lift gate to about right here, basically you'd pull this down to that height and then you'd press and hold on that. And then every time you would open up the lift gate, it would open up to this height rather than all the way up. A couple options back here. This one's been optioned with the $2,505 19 speaker Macintosh sound system. So you have your sub back here, but one thing I've never seen before is you also get speakers here on the trunk as well. So if you're tailgating, these are actually pretty cool and useful. You also get some cargo lights on your uh, tailgate as well. But with the two seat configuration, this is what it looks like back here. Very good amount of storage space here in the trunk area. And here are your carpeted floor mats. You get a little storage cubby down here. It's probably about, you know, five inches deep maybe. And then on the driver's side of the trunk, you get a 12 volt power outlet. Um, and also you do get fold flat second row seats if you needed a little bit more cargo capacity. And then if you lift it up on the cargo tray and you lift it up on this piece right here, that is where you will find your spare tire and your jack. So that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in the trunk area. One thing that is, you know, specific to Jeep is that you press the button right here to close the lift gate rather than, you know, pushing a button on the lift gate itself. So just something kind of interesting that Jeep does, but Finishing things off here at the back end, you get a body color rear bumper. You get six integrated parking sensors back here. You get a dual exhaust system, a class four hitch with a max tow capacity of 7,200 pounds. So this thing is very capable to tow your boat, to tow your side-by-side, -side, to tow your jet skis, etc. while you have your family in the vehicle. So if you're looking for a very capable SUV, but you don't want an SUV as big as a, a Tahoe, an Expedition, or a vehicle like that, well, this might be the one for you because I did a video with a Kia Telluride, which is about the same size as this. I did a video with one of those last week. You can check that video out on my channel. However, I wanted to mention that has a 5,000 pound max tow capacity, whereas the Grand Cherokee has a 2,200 pound greater tow capacity than the Telluride and they're about the same size. So if you do towing, but you also have a family, I'd give the Grand Cherokee a closer look. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into performance. Popping open that hood reveals the 3.6 liter naturally aspirated V6 that makes 293 horsepower and 260 pound-feet of torque. It is mated to an eight-speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in 7.4 seconds. And if you are wondering about fuel economy, you can achieve 19 miles per gallon in the city, 26 miles per gallon on the highway for 22 miles per gallon combined with four wheel drive. I did want to mention that you can only get the Summit in four wheel drive. So if you're looking for a two wheel drive Grand Cherokee, the Summit is not the one to get. This is four wheel drive only. But if you're enjoying the video so far today, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you're enjoying the video, please just take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. Those things really help me grow and I would very much appreciate it. But with that stuff out of the way, let's move into the interior. Moving on into the interior, as mentioned earlier in the video, you get keyless access as standard. So all you have to do is have your key fob in your pocket, walk up to the vehicle, put your hand behind the door handle and it will unlock. You can also lock it if you run your finger across these three little lines here and now it is locked. 
This is what the key fob looks like. It has a very fancy look and feel to it. And going over the functions, starting from the top, you have your unlock function, your lock function, your remote start function, your trunk pop function, and your panic function. If you wanted to remote start this, all you have to do is press this button twice, but because the vehicle is low on fuel, she doesn't want to fire up. So pressing the unlock function, let's take a look at what the interior of the Summit has to offer so this one has been specced with the global black napa leather with brown accent seats so you can see napa leather you get the brown accent colored stitching and a fancy looking door panel that we're going to start on so up top here you get some napa leather then you get some wood grain trim this button is going to turn on your massaging seats you get two memory seat adjustment settings all of that is the Napa leather with the brown accent colored stitching. You get a very nicely padded armrest. And if you wanted to power fold in your side view mirrors, you have to turn this about 180 degrees backwards and then the mirrors will fold in. Just twist it all the way back around and they will fold right back out. You get automatic up and down windows at all four corners. This button is going to restrict your passenger window privileges. You get your unlock and your lock functions, a little bit of storage space down here, a spot you could set a water bottle. And as mentioned a little bit ago, this one's been optioned with the $2,505 19 speaker Macintosh sound system with the subwoofer. It sounds fantastic. Then you get the aluminum, brushed aluminum door sill and where it says Summit is illuminated. And then these are what your front seats look like. So as standard, you get 16 way power front seats with massage and memory. So the front passenger also gets the memory seat settings. And then obviously these seats are also heated and ventilated as well, both with three levels of adjustability. And then you also get the adjustable headrest as well, which is very nice for long road trips. But now I'm gonna step on into the interior at the perfect time because right as I step into the interior, the rain is starting to pick up a little bit. So now let's take a listen to what this thing sounds like being fired up from the interior's perspective. So that is what it sounds like being fired up from the driver's seat. And now I'm just gonna walk you throughout all of the interior. Um, I was gonna say controls, but basically the entire interior. So up top here, you get the Macintosh tweeter. Then you get an HVAC vent, some wood grain trim, and down here you have your headlight control knob. So if you twist it all the way to the left, that is headlights off, that is parking lights on, that is headlights on, and then that is headlights automatic. And then pressing that button right there is going to turn your fog lights on or off. This button right here is going to adjust the uh, brightness of your ambient lighting. And then this right here is going to adjust the brightness of your gauge cluster, as well as your backlit buttons. And then if you come down a little bit more and you pull on that, that is going to engage your parking brake. If you wanted to disengage the parking brake, you'd have to push your foot against the brake, push against this, and the parking brake will disengage. Now, as mentioned a little bit ago, you get two memory seat adjustment settings for the driver and you also get a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel so the memory seat settings will also memorize your steering wheel settings as well but basically you can pull the steering wheel out push it away up and down all by this little thing right down here but now let's take a listen to the turn signal that is what the turn signal sounds like on the Grand Cherokee and then zooming back out. Obviously you get a leather wrapped steering wheel and it is also heated and you get one level of adjustability with the heated steering wheel. And just like any other vehicle, you have your horn at the center. So let's take a listen to it. That is what the horn sounds like on the Grand Cherokee. Now on the backhand side of the left side of the steering wheel, you have your tuning controls and then you also have a paddle shifter. And then on the backhand side of the right side of the steering wheel, you have your volume controls and your upshift paddle. So downshift paddle, upshift paddle, and on the left-hand side uh, of this steering wheel, all of these controls um, like these, and then that one right there are all for your digital gauge cluster. Then that button is going to pick up on a phone call as well as speak to the vehicle. That is going to hang up on the phone call. And then if you go to the right-hand side of the steering wheel, the Summit comes standard with adaptive cruise control with stop and go. So here are all your adaptive cruise settings. Now, moving into our gauge cluster, this is a standard 10.25 inch digital gauge cluster. This is what it looks like. This is the speedometer screen. So you can see you got your compass, you got your transmission status stuff, you get the speed limit sign, the ambient exterior temperature. This lets you know um, the status of the, um, what's it called, the air suspension. And then on the lower right-hand section, you got your fuel gauge, 
then this is your tachometer, the odometer, the coolant temperature. If you wanted to control what you see on this gauge cluster, I'm just gonna click to the right. So we're on screen number one. Now it is going to pop up the night vision. So as mentioned earlier, this has been optioned with the $2,865 Advanced ProTech Group 4, which gives you the night vision with pedestrian and animal detection. So that is what the night vision screen looks like. And then you also have your driver assistance screen as well. Now all I'm gonna do is click down right here. It's gonna bring me into the vehicle information screen so you can see your fuel economy stuff, your gauge summary, which is gonna show you different temperatures, pressures, and voltages. Um, then you can see your oil life, your tire pressure stuff, and your stop start stuff. If you click down one more, it's gonna bring you into your trip A and your trip B information. Then it's gonna pop up your navigation system. So this is the navigation screen. And then you also have your off-road screen, which is basically gonna let you know, um, you know which drive mode you're in, how high the um, air suspension is raised up. You can see your, um, what's it called, tachometer. You click over to the right, you can see your pitch and roll. Uh, or excuse me, this is your vehicle dynamics. And if you click all the way to the right, you can see your pitch and roll stuff. Clicking down one more time, you can see the uh, music that is being played. Then you get your messages, you get your settings. You can go into your screen setup so you can adjust what you see there. You can adjust what you see where the current gear is. You can adjust what you see uh, just about you know all, all of those three different places there. But uh, another thing you can do is you can adjust the head-up display. So again, with that advanced ProTech Group 4, you get a head-up display system. And right now the head-up display system is displaying the um, current speed and then the speed limit sign as well. So if you go into here and you press okay, you can adjust uh, what you see on the layout. You can go to simple, advanced, custom. Basically you can customize it to your uh, liking. You can adjust the height of it, the brightness, and you can turn it on or off as well. Uh, and then it brings you back into this screen. But if you click on this, this is gonna bring you into your five different tiles. So basically this is like a shortcut into like, let's say your fuel economy stuff. You can shortcut this into trip A, trip B, etc. Basically all of these are adjustable and you can basically click up or down to adjust what you see on them. So. Uh, anyways, that is what this screen does here. And I'm just gonna back out of that and move on. So obviously you get a beautiful leather wrapped dash. You get two HVAC vents. And going over these controls here, this is for your auto stop start system. This is for your lane keeping system. This is to turn traction control on or off. Then you got your hazard button. This is going to turn the parking sensor beeps like beep, 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 beep off. You can turn them on by that button as well. Then this vehicle has the parallel and perpendicular park assist. So if you press that, it will parallel or perpendicular park you into a parking spot. And then this is to turn the passenger screen on or off. The passenger screen is a $1,095 option, which I can show you uh, a little bit later in the video. But anyways, coming down just a little bit more. So this screen right here, uh, I'm going to go into the media screen, is your 10.1 inch Uconnect 5 infotainment system with built-in navigation and wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto connectivity. So down here, you have all of your different shortcut buttons. You can shortcut you into your home screen. You can go into your media screen. You can go into your comfort screen, so your climate control system. You can adjust the heated and the ventilated seats, the heated steering wheel, and your climate. You can also go into your massage seat functions there you get all of these different options with the massaging seats uh, obviously you can pop up your navigation stuff you can go into your apple carplay stuff you can go into your vehicle controls so you can go into your off-road screen so if you go into your off-road pages here you can see pitch and roll stuff select terrain suspension stuff the front facing camera the rear facing camera etc you can kind of see what you see on that screen there it also lets you know all of these different things here so that is what that screen does. Or you can go into your different vehicle controls. So you can pop up your 360 camera system. You can pop up any of these other things here. You can turn the passenger screen on, uh, passenger screen off. You can go into your different vehicle settings. So you get a couple different pages of vehicle settings. We'll pay attention to this side and you can see all of those different things on that screen. And then you can go in between your different apps. Um, so you get all these different apps here. You can go into your different favorites etc and then you got your time temperature if you click on that that is going to pop open the apple carplay stuff and um you know that's kind of about it for the screen it's not too difficult to use don't feel like you need to spend too much time on it and then beneath that as mentioned earlier you get heated and ventilated seats both get three levels of adjustability and then this center button right here is to turn the heated steering wheel on or off this is going to turn the screen itself off you can touch anywhere on the screen and it will come back to life 
Then you get your volume control knob. This is going to mute the audio system. And on this side, you have your tuning control knob. And then these are your temperature controls, fan speed control at the center, all of your different climate control stuff. If you don't want to see this stuff down in here, you can close that off. I want to show you what we got going on down here. Um, so basically, you can see you get a 12 volt power outlet. You get the HDMI port for the passenger screen. They could connect like, you know, uh, their computer to that screen or something, maybe an Xbox. Um, and then you get two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports, an auxiliary jack, and a decent amount of storage space down in there. iPhone 14 Pro Max for size reference. This is your drive mode selector. Um, you get sport mode, auto mode, snow mode, sand mode, or rock mode, and then basically you push up on this to go up, push down on this to go down, and then you have a rotary dial gear shifter. Basically, you twist to the right to go into drive, twist to the left to go into park, and then this right here is for your quadra lift air suspension. You push up all the way, it's going to put you into off-road mode two, pull down one, off-road mode one, bound one more is your uh what's it called the normal ride height then you got your arrow mode which is what we're in right now and all the way down is entry exit mode if you click this this is going to put you into your four-wheel drive low this is for true neutral and then this is your hill descent control button you also get two cup holders and you get a little bit of uh ambient lighting around the cup holders and you can close that off if you wanted to as well you get some piano black moving into the armrest it is nicely padded and it is leather wrapped and when you open it up you get a upper divider you can set what you want to in there or if you open it up all the way you get a decent amount of storage space down in there you also get a light and no connectivity down in the center console sorry not the greatest view of it but you can see this is what the dash looks like nice and fancy right with all of the different wood and leather and silver accent colored trim and then up top here i'm not sure how well you are going to be able to see it uh, but again this one has been optioned with the 1095 dollar uh, passenger screen so this is what the passenger display looks like there's really not too much stuff you can do without it or what on this screen i'm basically showing you what the screen looks like what you can navigate throughout the screen and all that kind of stuff uh, i don't think you need that as an option personally but coming down just a little bit more you get a lockable lower glove box you actually get a very good amount of storage space in the glove box considering the size of this suv and then on the passenger side you get your massage controls the two memory seat adjustment settings and just about everything that the driver gets you get here on the passenger side minus obviously all of the different driver controls that the driver always gets on any vehicle but as mentioned with the advanced pro tech group four you get um the digital rear view mirror so this is the digital rear view mirror let's say you really like the spec on this summit but you're not a fan of the digital rear view mirror well it also behaves like a regular rear view mirror so if you flip it forward now it's just a regular auto dimming rear view mirror so that is what's nice about these digital rear view mirrors is that you don't have to use them but they are nice to use because they do rid you of your blind spot and then you can also adjust the settings so you can adjust the brightness of this you can adjust the orientation down the orientation up and that's just about it. So I personally am a fan of the digital rear view mirror. You may not be, but I am. Then you get a sunglass holder up top here. Not the greatest view just because of the lighting. The Summit comes standard with a panoramic roof. So I'm going to open up the shade for the panoramic roof. And in the meantime, I'm gonna walk you throughout the different lighting controls. Uh, both of the driver and the passenger get LED reading lights. Here are your roadside assistance functions. This is going to open up your power lift gate. This is your instant dome light on button. It's gonna turn on all of the interior dome lights. And then this button is whether you want the lights to turn on or not when you open up the doors. And then finally, that is what the sunroof looks like when the shade is opened. It is a sliding and tilting sunroof. You've got your universal garage door opener. You can open up three different garage bays. And when you open this thing up, you get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights. And then the visor itself slides forwards and backwards for when the sun is in those awkward positions. Driver gets an Opu handle here. The front passenger also gets an Opu handle on that side as well. And that's kind of about it for what we got going on here in these front seats. Now, speaking of seat comfort, I think these seats are very comfortable in my personal opinion. You can adjust the lumbar support. You can adjust whatever you want to, to make it more comfortable. You have a thigh extension. Again, 16 way power seats. They're very configurable. So you can make them how you want them to be. 
Um, but now I'm just gonna throw the entire window sticker on screen. A couple things I wanted to note that you get standard, the 360 camera system, the adaptive cruise control with stop and go, the heated second row seats, the quad zone climate control. Uh, and now I'm just gonna highlight the MSRP. So the MSRP of the way that this particular 2024 Grand Cherokee Summit is spec'd is $73,815. This is selling well under MSRP because this was a dealer demo. So it's got about 3,186 miles on it as of right now. So they're asking, I think like 58 or $59,000 for this particular model. But uh, yeah, I wanna show you what we got going on in the rear seats before moving into the driving portion of the video. I do know that there is one package you can get uh, and basically it gives you a wireless charging pad and you get these second row sunshades. This one has not been optioned with that, but you do get some wood grain trim, the same accent colored stitching in Napa leather, automatic up and down windows here at the back and they do go all the way down. You also get two speakers on the door panel. You get your unlock and your lock functions on the second row doors and you get some storage space and a spot you could set a water bottle. This is what these rear seats look like. They are fold flat second row seats. So if you come over to here and you pull on this, you can see you get an additional about, you know, four feet of storage space with these seats down, but I'm gonna fold them back up and we're gonna step here into the second row. So up top here, you get an Opu panel, a spot you could set your dry cleaning and a LED dome light. You get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. You get an HVAC vent on your B pillar and you get the same stuff on that side as well. As mentioned, you get a quad zone climate control and this is what the system looks like when it is on. You can also turn it back off, which I just did, but now the front is going. Um, so I apologize about that. I'm gonna come up to here and I'm gonna turn that off here real quick. Uh, two HVAC vents, and then you get a 115 volt household power outlet, as well as two USB-A ports, two USB-C ports. And when it comes to my knee and leg room, I've got plenty of knee room. Here's another view of my knee and leg room. And then when it comes to headroom, I've got a bit of headroom left over as well. However, right now I'm a little too vertical. So if I pull on that same latch to fold these second row seats down, I can push on them and push back. And now I'm nice and comfortable and these seats do recline quite a ways. But you can see, take a look at all those Jeep uh, Grand Cherokees that you can see at the bottom of that window there. Jeep always likes to do those nice little Easter eggs. It's pretty funny, but you know, we've talked about the exterior, we've talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right, now on to the driving portion of the video. Take a listen. So while this might not be the most powerful option in its class, it's still got plenty of get up and go. It does not feel slow by any means. And it is a very comfortable driving experience because right now I'm clicking on this right here and now I'm getting a massage. So that is really nice, you know, especially on a vehicle that you can get a really good deal on nowadays. Like you can get on all pretty much of these like FCA product, or I guess it's not FCA, it's Stellantis now, like the 2024 Ram 1500s are selling way below MSRP uh, because the 2025s are now out. And these things also seem to be selling way under MSRP as well. So you can get some really good deals on these cars right now. And they're just really, they're good driving experiences. You know what I mean? It's cool to have an air suspension. Um, you know, because like, let's say you want to go off-roading, but you're not, you know, necessarily off-roading all the time. Well, let's say, you know, something presents itself and you need to, you know, raise the suspension all the way up because you need more ground clearance in the snow or something like that. Well, you click a button and the ground clearance raises quite a ways. So I think that is really sweet. And then here's a little acceleration. So nothing crazy, just a regular little acceleration there. And um, you know, I think the accent colored stitching here with the diamond pattern makes this thing look super, super premium. Uh, you know, like it almost has like a Range Rover-esque interior-ish with 
all of the leather, the touch points and stuff like that. It looks just very, very fancy. So here is a, another acceleration. Basically, I'm just gonna put it into sport mode and floor it. So definitely not the most powerful thing that you've driven, but it's got more than enough get up and go. You know what I mean? It's not gonna blow your socks off with its power, but I think if you don't really care about power, you're looking for something that's just gonna be comfortable, get you from point A to point B, um, you know, this is this has got the power to do so. Now we're gonna do a little highway test, test the road noise at about 70 miles an hour. So now we're just gonna regular accelerate onto the highway. Take a listen. Now take a listen to the road noise at about 70. It is well insulated from the outside world for sure. Cruises very nicely, it's very comfortable. You know, obviously this can be a cruiser. You know what I'm saying? If you live far and you wanna drive into work into something that's, you know, gonna give you a massage and you just be comfortable and easy to drive well then you should give the Grand Cherokee Summit a look now one thing I wanted to mention is that if you like listening to music in your vehicle then you should take a look at getting the Macintosh sound system I know it is a very pricey option but the sound system sounds really really good you know it's got the bass it's got the clarity it's got the volume um, and it's just it's a great sounding sound system in my personal opinion so I like to listen to music in my car so uh, I would be very happy with this sound system if this was my car you know what I mean and uh, I haven't really heard the bass sound system uh, in a summit that I can remember I don't believe I have I've only heard the Macintosh um, and you know the Macintosh just based off listening to it and it alone uh, it would probably be the sound system that I would have to choose just because you know at least for me uh, I think the upgraded sound systems for the most part are worth it in vehicles uh, granted yes there are you know the occasional vehicles where the upgraded sound system is not worth it um, and you know in this case I don't know because I haven't you know heard the standard sound system in the Grand Cherokee but I can tell you that this one sounds with the Macintosh sound system very very good so overall it's a comfortable ride it's pretty much going to give you all the features that you want and need on a vehicle and a little bit more adaptive cruise that's awesome it's standard 360 camera standard um so you know it's all it's up to you you know is this the vehicle for you i don't know i couldn't tell you if it was me i would go out take one for a spin if it's kind of you're kind of teetering on the idea of maybe of getting one take one for a spin see how you like it take it on the highway take it on the back road see how it handles see how it feels to you uh, because really only you can make the decision on if the vehicle is right for you but that's it for today's video if you guys did enjoy the video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up Please hit that subscribe button. I'm on my journey to 100,000 subscribers and I cannot reach my goal without your support. So if you enjoyed the video, if you learned anything from the video, please just take a second to like, comment, and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. Those things really help me grow my channel uh, and you, the YouTube algorithm you know, really appreciates the likes and comments in particular. So I'd appreciate it. But again, that is it for today's video. I will catch you all in the next one. Peace.